Hi, I'm Michelle. And I'm Christina, and today we're talking about worship, and that's something that's actually very close to my heart. Uh, do you want to share a little bit more about that? Sure. So for me, worship is a time where I can really focus on God and just forget the rest of the world and the worries, and I can just focus on His beauty. And I really love to do this using dance and also writing. It's just a time I really feel God's presence, and He feels very close to me. Wow, that's really amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Now let's check out this God story to see how Jesus was worshipped after He was born. But God sent a rescue. <laughs> hey everyone, it's Dania. It's great to see you again. I grew up in a city that had a lot of snow in the winter. Sometimes the snow would be as high as my waist, if not higher. There was so much of it. So one day, there was even more snow than there normally was. And my brother and I decided to go outside and shovel our own driveway and also shovel our neighbor's driveway. We didn't have a reason for it. We just felt like doing it and being kind. And I realized afterwards that that was a form of worshiping Jesus. We're worshiping him when we're showing kindness to others and showing his love to others. Worship is all about pointing our hearts to God and having everything inside of us saying, yes, God. In today's God story, we're going to take a look at some guys who came to visit Jesus after he was born and how they worshiped him with what they brought. And that points to today's big idea. We can worship Jesus with what we have. So last time we heard the story about Jesus and how he was born and how God came to Joseph in a dream. We learned that Jesus is God with us, which is a great reminder for the times where it feels like God is really far away. One of the ways that we connect with God is by turning our hearts to him. When we line up our heart with God's heart, we celebrate him, we tell him how much we love him, and we experience what it's like to be loved by him. After Jesus was born, there were some men who came to celebrate his birth. Let's take a look at what happened by turning to the first book of the New Testament, Matthew, and picking up in chapter two, where we left off last time. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from Eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem. Who were these wise men? Were they the three kings that are in the popular Christmas songs? Well, here's what we know about the three men from the East. East was probably Arabia, according to other references from the Bible. They brought three gifts, but we're never told how many of the men there actually are. And we also know that they were scholars, so they were really smart guys who studied a lot. So these smart guys from Arabia went out to find the baby who was going to be the king of the Israelites. The wise men said that they saw the star that appeared when Jesus was born, and so they came to worship the new king. So in the middle of all of this, there was a king by the name of King Herod. And when he heard that there was a baby who was born who was going to be king of the Jews, he was upset about it, which is pretty understandable because he was already the king. So King Herod called together all of the chief priests of the people and all of the teachers of the law, the law being the first five books of the Bible. He asked them where the Messiah, the rescuer, the savior was going to be born. Let's take a look at what happened. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. In Bethlehem, that is where Jesus was born. About 700 years before Jesus' birth, the prophet Micah told that the rescuer, the savior, the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. How cool is that? Let's read what happened. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. When the wise men arrived to where Jesus was, they bowed down and worshiped him. They gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, which were typically given to a king. Gold, because it's valuable, frankincense as a perfume, and myrrh as a type of anointing oil. Even though these wise men weren't from God's special people, the Israelites, they recognized that Jesus was a king and worshiped him as one. After the wise men spent some time there, God warned them in a dream not to go back to King Herod. So they traveled a different way home. So you and I might not have money for things like gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but we can certainly worship God with the things that we do have. 
our actions, our time, our creative abilities, our sports abilities, our singing, our dancing, by being kind to your siblings, by helping shovel your neighbor's snow, by doing your chores without being asked. It's really just loving others and showing kindness to others the way that God wants us to. We can worship God by turning our hearts to Him, focusing on how amazing He is, and just celebrating how powerful He is. So as you celebrate this Christmas season, remember that the most wonderful thing is Jesus and that we can worship him with what we have. As always, it was great hanging out with you guys. See you next time. So the wise men worshiped Jesus with gifts that were usually actually presented to kings, but we actually don't need that. We can worship God with whatever gifts we have. And Linda's gonna show us a few different people using their talents to worship God. Watch this. When we talk about worship, we so often jump straight to music. But did you know that worship actually means to show love and respect to God? Jamie Jones and a few of his stunt performers visited us recently to show us what they do on movies. And trust me, it is really cool. But pay attention in the video and see if you can understand how Jamie's behavior on set is actually an act of worship. I'm Jamie Jones, I'm stunt coordinator. I've been in stunts for 31 years now. My whole family does it with me, which is great. When you're on set, you have a way to either show people or at least bring people a little closer to understanding things about God or Jesus as far as how you carry yourself or people see you as a family unit that's together in this day and age and they feel it's unusual and they ask you about it. So it's a great way to, I guess, preach God without being preachy. So for getting into something like stunts, there's a danger and a risk factor. So proper training and going to the right places where you can learn to do a lot of things safely. The most important thing is being humble, how you carry yourself every day. It's very important that you are focusing on becoming better, more skilled, and that's part of what keeps you safe every day. Certainly don't let people tell you you can't do things. Um, if you have faith, you just have a much better chance of getting where you want to go in the right way. Did you catch what Jamie said? That others get to know God better by the way that you carry yourself. Meaning the way that you act and behave at home, at school, around your friends, shows Jesus to other people. And that itself is worshiping God. We can worship God with what we have, whether it's singing, dancing, playing sport, doing your best at school. Everything you do can show your love and respect for God. Check out how Matthew Kahn uses painting to worship God. I really do appreciate the gifting God has given me, and I want to be able to develop and use it further. I want it to be able to grow with it. Oftentimes when I paint, I don't really want to get caught up in what God's using this for. I like to keep it really natural for myself. You don't really need to know, otherwise you get caught up with, you know, your ego or like not being humble or just being proud of what you can do when, when God's working through you. So I'd prefer if I didn't know how he works through me. I just want to paint because I like to paint. It's a gift God has given me and I, I just want to do my best at it without anything attached to it. Steven's a singer, actor and dancer and when he dances for God he feels completely free and finds it's a great way to worship God. So when I dance for an audience, I just feel such a rush. I get adrenaline, yeah, I get butterflies, and I just get really nervous, but it's like a nervous excitement. But when I'm dancing for God, I just feel at peace. I feel free. I just feel alive and that I'm doing what I was made to do. Worship is showing love and respect to God, and we don't need any fancy skills or talents to do that. We can worship God with what we have. I love the different ways that people worship God, and I realized that being a good steward of what God has given you is a way to worship Him. 
It's really true. It's really the attitude of our heart that matters in worshiping God. You know, how we live, how we give thanks to God, that we tell him how amazing he is. Yeah, and Jesus is just so amazing that we really can worship him with what he's given us. It's so true. Now let's break up into our small groups and see what this looks like in our own lives.